Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, we're going to be installing a bed rack on the back of my 2020 Ram Rebel. So I wanted to install a bed rack on the back of this truck for a long time because I have a kayak, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt throwing the kayak in the back of the truck, basically eating up all your cargo space. So the best thing to do is to throw it up on a rack to fit that, so then you save the bedroom for all your luggage and all the stuff you want to keep dry. But I wanted that bed rack to do two specific things, or at least meet two specific qualifications. One, I wanted to make sure that whatever bed rack I went with, it would accommodate the use of a hard folding tunnel cover. So it can't be a bed rack that clamps on the inside like a lot of the uh, uh, bed uh, racks on the market do today. It needs to be something that sits outside on top of the bed rail. The second thing that I wanted that bed rack to do is I wanted to... I wanted it to be easily removable. I won't always need that rack on the truck, and if I don't need to drive around with it on there, I want it to be pretty easy to take off, but I also want it to be easy to kind of move around my garage and maybe store up high. I didn't want a big, huge, cumbersome rack, like an overlanding rack. What I wanted is a something that's gonna be structurally sound to carry that guy, but also something that's pretty easy to pull on and off the truck. Enter the Adirac Pro Series. So this is the Adirac Pro Series uh, truck bed rack. And essentially what this is, is aluminum channels, the, the aluminum rails that will mount in each of the stake hole pockets. So you're gonna get a channel here and a channel on the other side. And then these aluminum uprights mount inside that channel. So that's just like that. And then you have your truck right, or truck rack. And then you have your crossbars here which go from side to side. So you're gonna get a front rack and you're gonna get a rear rack, ergo giving me my uh, kayak rack for the truck. But again, since that rack will mount through the stake hole pockets in the front and the back, so you put a bolt through here with some brackets, a bolt through this guy with some brackets, and then your aluminum channel mounts here, and that's what your uprights mount to, then you're good to go and you could retain the use of your folding tunnel cover. Now, they sell a couple versions of these, so if you have a hard folding tunnel cover like me, you need to make sure that what you get the Pro Series rack. So the Pro Series rack has the straight uprights. There's another series of uh, rack that they sell, actually two of them, but one of the other series they sell actually has angled uh, uprights, and while those do look really nice, for those of us with the hard folding tunnel cover, you will you could potentially run into an issue where when you try to unfold this, that angled rack is going to get in the way and it won't let you use your tunnel cover all the way. You'll obviously still be able to mount it on there, but you won't be able to fold this guy up. And I wanted to make sure that I have 100% functional use of this guy with or without the rack on there. So, like I said, you get an aluminum channel. So this is the aluminum channel that mounts on, this one will go on the passenger side. You get one for the driver's side. Then you get your uprights, so you got four uprights, one for each corner of the truck. Those mount in this channel right here, and we'll, we'll walk through that so you can see basically a square channel. We use a T-nut in there and some bolts. And then here is the cross member. So this is the cross member that goes from side to side, which ultimately the kayak will be sitting on. And you can see on my application, there's a rubber pad up on top, which is nice because when I mount the kayak to that guy, I don't have to worry about scratching the kayak or, or messing up any of the metal. I have a nice rubber uh, friction surface for it to get tied down to. In addition to obviously all of the structural members, you get the instructions, you get end caps. So these end caps will go on the end of the cross braces or cross members. And then you get the hardware. So let me go ahead and take everything apart here and show you what all comes in this kit and then we can talk through the installation. Installation is relatively simple with one caveat to that. Okay, so since that truck bed rack requires the use of the stake hole pockets, we're gonna need to cut open the front ones. So on my Ram, I think on all the newer Rams, 2019 and newer, you'll need to cut this open. So we'll just follow these lines with a really sharp razor blade and that'll open up the front ones. Then as far as the back ones, they are open, but what we need to do is basically trim a straight line around the edge of the hole itself because we need to remove a lot of that plastic trim in here and we need to free up and make sure that there's clearance to get to the metal because we're gonna drop a metal bracket in there and we don't want it pushing on the plastic. And I'll show you when I cut this piece out what I'm talking about, but basically this plastic goes pretty deep into the hole and we wanna be able to drop a metal bracket in there and have that metal push up against the top 
metal bracket that's just underneath this bed rail cap. So we're gonna have to remove just a slight piece of this just to make sure we get this little throat of plastic uh, removed out of the hole here. So we're gonna have to do that on both the rears and then on the fronts, like I said, we're just gonna take a razor blade and cut this guy open to remove him. All right, so let's run through the hardware that you should receive in the kit with your Adirac Pro Series. So obviously you get a bunch of bolts. The short bolts are gonna be for assembling the uprights and the cross members. You're gonna get end caps for those rails. So the rail that's gonna mount on the bed rail itself, you have a plastic end cap for both sides of it. So it gives it a nice finished look on the aluminum. You get four lung bolts and you're gonna have one with a washer per stake hole pocket. So you're gonna have four of those things. You're gonna have four of these brackets and these brackets are for attaching the upright to the cross member. So when we go to build, uh, after we install the bed rail side, so that little channel that goes on here and we start to build the actual upright piece, the rack itself, we're gonna be using these guys to attach the uprights to the cross member. Additional short bolts for that installation. And then you have these plates. So these plates are where the magic happens. So these are how you will attach using this bolt this bolt's gonna drop through that aluminum channel and it's basically those brackets or those little metal plates are gonna mount or they're gonna drop in through the stake hole pocket and that's what's gonna be your washers and spacers to keep this guy taut but also keep that channel tightened down. And here's what I'm talking about. So each stake hole pocket has two spacers plus the bottom mounting bolt which has a bung on it. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna assemble these guys you're gonna have the two spacers on top. This is gonna to drop to the channel and then it's gonna to mount to that guy. So I have the one of the stake hole pockets I've assembled. So they give you a bunch of string and the reason they do that and the reason they have drilled holes here is this is how you install these guys in each of the stake hole pockets. So you basically string them up and then after you trim everything down, you're gonna use the string to help you with lowering these guys down in the, in the place. And when you pull it taut, like I said, the top two steel plate or stop top two aluminum plates there are for spacers and really what they're there to do is clear the gap between the bottom of the metal and the top of the bed rail so you're not smashing down your plastic bed rail they're just there to space out where the top channel mounts in relation to the bottom actual mounting plate so once you get these guys dropped down in the space you take this bolt with a washer you thread it down through the aluminum channel that you're going to mount on the side bed rail and it's going to basically drop down through here and attach to this plate and that's how you're going to tighten everything down. This will all make sense once we get those holes cut and we start to move forward with mounting the bed rails. All right, before we do cut those open, like I said, you're going to need a razor blade or some sort of a cutting tool to open up those plastic things. And this plastic is pretty thin stuff, so you're not going to need to get anything crazy. But as far as tools for the rest of the installation, super, super, super simple. Phillips head, and you're going to need this to attach the set screws for the end caps. And then a 916 socket. And the 916 will work on all of the bolts that are included in this kit. So this is all you need between these two razor blade good to go so let me go ahead and get the stake hole pockets cut open and then we can start with installing that side rail install it on the other side and then work on the uprights okay so we are going to start on the passenger side and basically what i'm going to do is i got a utility knife here i'm just going to lightly score around here and just keep following that pre i guess that embossed little line there that outline and once i get through that that's going to give me the room i need for installing the bed rail and then we will work on the rear and the rear is going to require a little bit of a power solution but for here we're going to use a razor blade keep it nice and tame let's do it all right so we got that guy opened up so here's the plastic piece and like i said all i did is took a razor blade just kind of slowly went around the outside really all that does is opens up the access to an existing stake hole pocket you got to do nothing with the metal but that is where these metal spacers are ultimately going to drop into so now let's go to the rear one. So this one's a little bit tricky. So this is the rear stake hole pocket. And like I said, what we need to do is basically trim a lip around here. But what we need to do ultimately at the end of the day, we want to make sure these spacers fit inside this hole without contacting any plastic because that way they're going to properly space out the top of the bracket here with the bottom of the mounting nut. So we want to make sure that when we trim this guy open that we trim it with enough room to clear these guys. And don't worry about being a little too overzealous. Let's grab that bracket. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But if you get a little crazy with the trimming, don't fret. 
not the end of the world because you'll notice that when you install these guys they cover up quite a bit of that hole so you're really not going to see anything if you get a little bit crazy with it ultimately um, mine I'll probably be about that wide so we're gonna trim it a little bit wider than it probably should be but that'll give us enough clearance to drop in those metal spacers so I'm gonna I tried using a razor blade that was gonna take forever and that's kind of a deep cut so what I'm gonna do is use a roto zip with this drywall blade on there I've done this in the past with these cutouts it's actually easier to control this as I go around the turns in a smaller little blade but again razor blade will work perfectly fine but this is gonna make quick uh, work of that cut so let's go ahead and do it and I'll show you what that cut looks like once we get it out all right so it's time to assemble these little installation apparatuses so we're gonna get our rope and then we're gonna line up one of the mounting plates with two of the spacers now you're gonna have four of these plates but two of them will have a notch and that notch means these are the front plates so essentially when they get mounted in the truck you're gonna have two spacers like that and then that notch goes on the inboard side of the truck bed so we're going to be doing our passenger side so we have our notch that notch is actually going to go up against there so it clears everything down there but actually that helps move that mounting nut out of the way now one other thing you need to make sure you do is this is the bottom of the mounting plate this is the top of it so we're going to mount, go like that line these guys up and then we're going to drop our rope down through each of them we're going to do the same thing in the rear with this guy get our ropes dropped down through there knot them and then we'll be good to go so let's go ahead and get these guys set up we have our rail up there ready to go and let's drop them into the stake hole pockets and I'll show you how to assembly. All right, so we have our brackets ready to go. We have the rear bracket, so we got the mounting bolt on the bottom and again, that the longer side of it goes towards the bottom of the truck. Then we got two spacers tied through our rope. We got our bolt ready to go with a washer. On the front, same thing, but we know it's the front because it has this notch there and the notch is going to going to go on the inboard side of the truck bed. Now one thing I forgot to point out is the cuts. So when you cut out the front stake hole pocket, this is what you're left with. In the rear, since you already have a hole in there, you want to cut out that long throat, I guess, or that long sleeve of plastic that comes out of the hole. So just cut that guy and then run a file just to make sure everything's smooth. And like I said, it doesn't need to be super pretty because that bracket is ultimately going to cover up everything here. So let's go ahead and get these guys ready to go. This is a very difficult thing to do with one hand. It's super easy to do, but it does require both hands. So I'm gonna to try to set the camera up and show you how I'm gonna do the front. The front and the rear are, are identical. The only difference is that notch on the bracket here, but everything else goes in the same. You basically just drop all the plates down, pull them up, and then thread that rope through the um, that metal channel and then bolt it down finger tight for now and then we'll get everything else set up and then we'll uh, tighten everything down towards the end here. Okay, so now that we got everything ready to go, make sure you have your front mounting bracket. We know it's the front because it has that notch there. We got our bolt ready to go and we got our channel here. So again, this is super simple. All you gotta do is take your rope and I feed everything down in there. Use the rope to guide everything up into place and then it's good to go there. So now all we gotta do is just pull the bracket over here Make sure that it doesn't tip off the back of the truck. So once we got that, just triple check these. All right, that bracket's lined up. We'll take our bolt, and we're just gonna drop our bolt right down in there, and just finger tight it now. So we're gonna leave it finger tight, and then everything's good to go. We could just leave this rope dangle here. So now let's go ahead and do the rear. And the reason you want this finger tight with some planer is because you need to be able to lift up the rear of this bracket in order to fit the other mounting hardware in the rear of the truck. So let me go ahead and do that, and then we can continue on with the installation. All right, so our rail is in. So we have our mounting rope still tied off here. What I'm gonna do is untie the single knot and then put a knot on each end. And then what you could do is you could tuck that rope down in each end and you could leave it in there. So if you ever were to need to remove these rails, you could just grab that rope with a pair of needle nose and then pull everything out so you don't drop it all down in there. Otherwise, you can just let it drop down in there and then just fish it out with a long uh, pair of pliers. So same thing in the rear, we have our rope hanging out still and we got the mounting bolt in there finger tight. We have some play with this guy, so I'll be able to clear my bed or my tunnel cover pretty good here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab these guys. And I believe we're gonna need four per side because we're gonna need two of these to mount the 
front rail and we're gonna need two to mount the back rail. We're gonna slide these guys into that channel. So I'll show you where these go. So this is our mounting channel and you simply take those guys and just pop them in there. So we're gonna push four of them in there now and then we're gonna go ahead and put the end cap on over here, put the end cap on on the front of the truck and then we're gonna get these guys lined up. So I think as far as lining them up, once I get the cap on there, I'm gonna try to pull these maybe up here flush with the front of the bed cover. Um, I think that might look good. This is all kind of personal preference. There's really no right or wrong here. As long as you're firmly on the bed rail here, firmly on the bed rail up front, then you're good to go. Here's our end cap. It's a piece of little plastic and essentially it just slides right into, of course it's not gonna be easy. All right, so I have the end caps on the metal channel on the bed rails and we are ready to tighten them down. So what I'm gonna do now is basically just line the whole rail itself up against the front edge of, so I'm looking at the front edge of the truck bed. So it's gonna line up with the edge of the plastic bed cap and that's basically where it's gonna find its new home. So what that does is it places that guy there, our mounting bolts right there, let's follow to the rear and it makes it ensures that the rail itself is planted pretty heavily on the the uh the plastic bed rail so as far as loading and everything we're going to be good to go it's not hanging off too far off the rear here so i'm gonna go ahead and tighten these guys down and then we'll do the same thing on the driver's side and then we'll start assembling this guy and that's where we need to get the tape measure out because we're going to assemble this and we're going to want to make sure that we measure from the inside of the bed rail here to that side to ensure that our uprights are spaced out appropriately but let's tighten this guy down. It doesn't need to be crazy tight. Remember, this is all aluminum. So while it won't rust, it will strip if you over tighten it. So let's go ahead and tighten everything down. All right, before we get into assembling the uprights, I wanna point out the orientation of these guys. So you wanna make sure that you have the right uprights for each of the front and the rear bed rack. So the front edge of the front rack is gonna have that straight edge and then the rear side of the rear side of the bed rack is going to have the flat edge so you're going to have a flat edge on the rear of the truck and a flat edge on the front of the truck and these angled parts point towards the middle of the truck so you're going to have flat here angled and then here you're going to have angled and then flat it'll make sense when we start to assemble these guys but basically make sure that each upright is assembled the right way or you're using the right partner for each one of them so the first thing we're going to do is assemble one of the racks here so we want to make sure that we got our hardware ready to go and the hardware you need are for these little short 9 16 bolts and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take these bolts we're going to pop them through here and then we're going to loosely tighten them into this bracket and essentially what this is going to be is this is going to slide into the channel on the underside of the cross member all right, so we have that bracket loosely on one of the uprights here. And then when we're tightening this, we want to make sure, so you saw, let's see here. On each of these cross members, there's an Adirac sticker. You want to make sure that that is on the same side as the flat end of the upright. So once I assemble this, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But the next step here is to make sure that you found the bottom of it. So again, the top has that rubber um, inlay in here and the bottom has just the regular channel. And then you're just going to take this guy and simply slide it right in there so we're gonna leave it a little bit loose right now I'm gonna finger tighten it just a little bit and then what we'll do is we'll assemble the other one and then we'll get this up on the truck we will install these guys and then we'll start measuring and making sure that each side is equal so we'll measure here and if this is six inches we want to make sure that we got six inches laying off on that side so everything's flat I found with bed racks like this that you don't want to fully tighten them down until they are actually mounted to the bed rails because what could happen is if you tighten them down on the floor and your measurements are maybe a, a hair off, you could either bow the bed, the cross member, or you could bend it down. So you don't want that. You want that cross member to be flat straight across because you want the ultimate, you want to retain the structural integrity of it and you can only do that by it being flat. So make sure that you wait until you actually get the rack on the truck and mounted to this rail before you actually tighten down completely the top there because again, you wanna make sure that it's nice and flat. Okay, so you can see I pulled my truck out of my garage a little bit. That was so I could open up the tailgate so I could lay the uprights on here while I'm doing this. If I was working with somebody else, it'd be a lot easier to do it with the truck, but it's kind of a tight fit here. And since I'm by myself, I want all the room I could, uh, 
I could get here. So before I go ahead and tighten everything down completely and get the uprights on here, I'm gonna untie these guys and just pull the rope completely out. I looked around and I don't have enough room to jam the rope down in there, which is completely fine. I'll just leave the uh, the brackets without the rope. If I ever need to remove it, I'll just fish those guys out. And I'll do that on all four corners and I'll just save the ropes for later. So let's do that and then let's get uh, everything ready to go to start to install the uprights. All right, let's pretend that the bed racks are actually installed in the truck. So I was talking earlier about the orientation of the uprights. This is how it works. So you're going to have a front end that's going to be flat, and that'll be flat up against the glass of the back of your truck. Then you're going to have a flat end that's going to be on the side of the tailgate. And then in the middle of the truck bed, you're going to have these tapered sides. So I point that out because if when you assemble these things, you take note of where that Adirac sticker is, you can actually assemble these so the Adirac sticker faces the rear of the truck on both the front and the rear rack. That way you know if you do remove these, like I plan to remove these every so often when, I, when they're not in use, you know which one's gonna be the rear, which one's gonna be the front. That's important because it's very likely that the width between the rear of the red bed rails and the width between the front of the bed rails is gonna be different. So these things are gonna be set up slightly different as far as the width. So if you have that there, or if you have other ways to mark in the front and the rear, um, that's just how I plan to do it. That way you can get these on and off the truck much easier. So like I said, everything from the hardware right now is kind of finger tight on these guys. We're going to go ahead and maybe we'll start with the front one. That way it's not in the way. So we'll take the front one and we'll get that guy installed on the front of the truck. Ignore all the crap from my kids in the back. We got soccer practice tomorrow and we just got home from hockey practice. Truck beds full of stuff. All right, so let's get these guys thrown up there and I'll show you how to install them. But in order to get ready to install the front, all right, let's go on this side. We wanna make sure that the two, these, these nuts that we put in here, we wanna make sure that there's two up in the front on both sides. So we'll just take two and just slide them up there. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. That way, when we go to install the uprights, we just pass that bolt through the frame itself it's gonna pop out of this hole here, and then this hole's gonna line up with those nuts that we just slid to the front. So let's get everything lined up. All right, I am in the rear of the truck, standing uh, towards the front of the bulkhead. I already have that side tightened down, but super simple. All you gotta do is just drop this guy into place. You wanna make sure that when you're installing it, there's actually a notch on the outboard side of these uprights. You wanna make sure that notch is over the top of this little ledge here. That way everything's lined up. Then when it comes time to install it, you wanna make sure that the upright is around this mounting bolt. That way it's all the way far forward. You can move it a little bit to where you want it at the end of the day in this general location. And I think you could even move it back to wherever you want it. But for my purposes, I'm just gonna mount it right up at the front here and maybe eh, go a little bit up. I'll go all the way to the front of the uh, truck bed. So again, these guys just thread right into those little nuts that you had in the channel. Let's see. I gotta find them. Oh, I don't think I slid these up yet. So all we're going to do is just essentially line that guy up, get those bolts up here, and then tighten everything down. And again, this is all aluminum, so you don't need to get crazy tight with everything. As long as it's pretty tight with a socket set or a socket wrench, you're good to go. Don't go crazy tighten it down to 150 foot-pounds. You don't need to do that. This does not take much to hold everything in place. So let me go ahead and get those nuts slid all the way up here, tighten this guy down, then we'll start on the rear. All right, so we got the rear rack laid in place. I got it hand tightened on the driver's side. Go ahead and tighten everything down on the passenger side. Um, it's gonna be pretty close between this mounting bolt and the inside bolt. Let's see here. It'll be pretty close between this mounting bolt and the bolt here if you wanna, if you want your upright to kind of conceal these mounting bolts. But with a ratcheting wrench or a wrench, you should be able to access it. This one should be no issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy installed here and then start on aligning everything. So what I found on the front rack, in order for these guys to be vertical, I basically need to have two and a half inches of the upright or the cross member sticking out on both sides. So that gave me a almost perfectly flat look on that front bed rack. So I'm gonna see what this one is, but the front is gonna be two and a half inches overhang on both sides. And we'll see what this one is. It looks like a little bit different, might be a little bit wider. And then we'll go ahead and put those end caps on there and close up shop here. All right, so the rear bed rack is done. We're good to go. Now we gotta put the finishing touches on those crossbars, which are the end caps. 
So similar to how everything else worked on this uh, bed rack, everything works with these little T-nuts and slots. So what we're going to do is take this bolt, we're going to thread it through one of the end caps, and then we're going to put that T-slot, we're going to hand tighten it on there, and then all we got to do then is pop it up on the end of the cross member, and then we're good to go. So I went ahead and already did the driver's head ones, so really all you do is just uh, loosely put everything together, pop this guy on there, and then just use your 9 16ths again to tighten everything down. So what's comical is we're going to find out real soon if I'm going to be able to fit my truck in the garage with the rack on or not. It's going to be close, but we'll see. But as far as measurements, so I think I said that the front was two and a half inches from the outside of the upright to the end of the rail without that cap on there. In the rear, the rack must be closer. So it actually ended up being three and a quarter from the upright to the outside of the rail on both sides. So like I said, your measurements are gonna be different. It's really all in how you install this guy and then how everything is lining up here. But ultimately what you want at the end of the day is this guy to be straight up and down and that guy to be flat, the cross member. So now my favorite part of this whole thing is, uh, there we go. So we go to pop up our tonneau cover and oh, it opens up with a better rack on. How awesome is that? All right, so let's go ahead and get these end caps on and then wait until daytime and we can take a final look at everything and then we can load up the kayak and see how everything loads up on top of the bed rack. All right, so the rack is installed. We got some daylight just to check everything out. So the rack looks awesome, functions awesome. You can see I took the kayak down to the river today just to try everything out and everything functioned fine. Uh, as far as tying it down, it was super easy to do it. And what you'll notice is I had to flip these guys upside down. And the reason I had to do that was to fit my garage. So with them up the other way, that's about one inch and that one inch matters when it comes to pulling out of my garage. So I was hitting the weather stripping and I'd rather play it safe than sorry. So I just flipped them upside down. So if I did need them, I could flip them back upright, but they work out perfectly fine for carrying my kayak. So I think I'll just leave them how they are for now. All right, so as far as my top five takeaways for this guy, first and foremost, the primary reason I got this rack over anything else on the market was the ability to use it with a hard tunnel cover. So you can see, this is the vertical rack. The Pro Series goes straight up and down as far as the uprights. And because of that, it clears hard covers. So if I pull this back a little bit, you can see I'll be able to fold this guy perfectly up and down. And my front panel also moves up and down perfectly fine because those straps are, are A-OK -okay and they're out of the way, or those uprights are A-OK -okay and out of the way. Number two, uh, easy to remove and adjust. So like I said, everything's a 9 16 bolt. So each corner has two 9 16 bolts. So you got one, two there, two there, two there, two there for a total of eight, which means I could adjust this super easy. So all I gotta do is just back out these bolts. I could slide everything along this uh, rail and then tighten everything down. And if I need to remove it, it's super easy to remove. I just gotta undo these things and then pop it off the truck. Uh, number three. Inexpensive, uh, so this is just over 500 bucks for this setup, uh, which is awesome. And as far as truck bed racks, it's super affordable, especially when you consider the fact that this rack works perfectly with hard folding tunnel covers. That's a rare thing these days on these trucks uh, to find a rack that works with a with a uh, hard tunnel cover, even more so a rack that works with other brands tunnel covers. So this is made by a company called Adirac, which is owned by AgriCover. And this is my Xtang Encore tunnel cover. You can see it clears everything perfectly fine. So the mere fact that you can mix and match this stuff is awesome. Number four, the rack looks awesome. So it definitely fits the bulky, rugged look of the Rebel perfectly. Uh, that black powder coating on the aluminum looks great. And then the angles kind of match well with the ruggedness of the Rebel. So super happy there. And then last but not least, super easy to load. So there are rubber uh, inserts up on the top of the overlay that keep everything in place once you get it up there, but also they're not too sticky that you can't slide things up there. So this is a 10 foot kayak that I was able to slide up there by myself uh, because those ru that rubber grip or that rubber inlay on the top of the, uh, on the top of the rack is not overly sticky. So it allows it to slide, but it also keeps things in place when everything's tied down. So with that said, that is the Adirac Pro Series installation. Uh, if you got any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments below. I will leave a link to this in the description. But with that said, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it.